Citroen viewers, and welcome to another edition of the Hindu Hindu Perspective, a program prepared and presented by the Dharmanal Board of Swaha to allow members of the national community to voice their opinion, and of course, for the pundits and other special invited guests to share their views on various aspects of the national community and Hinduism. Today, once again, we have in our panel our two distinguished pundits. We have Pandit Gyanir Prasad, our senior pundit of the Dharmanda Swaha Panditji. Thank you once again for lending your expertise and uh, views on our program. And we have Pandit Ishar Madhu Marat, president of Swaha Panditji. Thank you once again for being here um, to help lead off on some discussions. Um, as you normally do, we we'll start with, with prayer, and I normally ask both pundits. So today I will lead an open prayer because we all supposed to pray. So we just take a few moments on the joint prayer dedicated to Sri Ganesh Bhagwan. Om Vakratun Namaha Kaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kutumi Deva Sarvakari Shu Sarvada Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Shanti Bodhisattva Gajanan Swami Ki Jai. So, Pandits, what we'll do this on this program, we'll just continue um, from where we left off last week. Uh, last week we had a very interesting discussion. We would have given some updates on um, you know, our activities in Swahan as possible uh, in a few moments. But Panditji just give us a little um summary of new developments. So just to reinforce what we are doing over the next month or two. And coming out of the discussions last week, I've had a lot of positive feedback on the program and the topic. You know, persons believe that these are the things that need to be spoken, is not something that we hide behind. And you know, the mayor Swaha has been commended for taking that initiative and being brave to bring these topics to the forefront in a very positive way. And of course, to have the channels of discussion open where we are saying that we are sharing perspective, but we are also inviting members of the public to share your views. Coming out of the discussions last week, there are some questions that were raised, which I'd like to ask to the panel to get your opinion. Um, but before we do so, Panditji, Panditji, sure, you know, if there are any updates you'd like to share with us, you know, we invite you to take a few moments, a few minutes, and we'll do that now. Casey Taram, viewers. And so, uh, thanks, and Pandit uh, Jaidadji and Pandit Gyandirji, it's wonderful to join with you once again today. So, devotees and viewers, supporters of Swaha and supporters of the Hindu perspective, Swaha has... Um, a long tradition, of course, since the inception of Swaha, celebrating Indian Arrival Day in a very significant way. And um, we term, the, the term that was used or coined rather by Pandit Gyandeo Ji, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, is Swadeshi. Swadeshi, referring to that which is indigenous to, to, to our culture here, indigenous to our people and Swaha, of course. And Swadeshi celebration, so we would have had Swaha Swadeshi Indian Arrival celebration. Swadeshi competition. And in years gone by, we had fantastic competitions with all the centers and affiliates and branches of Swaha, um, from bhajan singing to dance, um, instrumental, choral speaking, storytelling, art, etc. And all of that, we are phasing all of that back in. So after the COVID period, where certain things kind of, you, you know, um, I will have to say went on the back burner for one of our better term because, um, of course, more things became important. We had other priorities, the health and well-being of our people, the safety of our membership and our, our families were, were, were critical. Um, that was critical. And so we would have, you know, not gone straight back into some of the activities we had. But this year, we are recommencing with one major one. And as I alluded to last week, with the advent of the Ram Janmasthan, Ram, Ram Sri Ram Janmabhumi Mandir in Ayodhya, we decided to focus on Prabhu Sri Ram. So there are a number of, um, you know, themes that we, we may center our celebration on, but basically it is Ramayan. Ramayan singing, Ramayan chanting. Um, so we are having a Ramayan singing competition, the Swadeshi Swaha Ramayan singing competition on May 19th. It will be held at the Sukshanti Bhakti Mandali from 9 a.m. May 19th, that's a Sunday, at Sukshanti, which is Pandit Gyandeo's temple. He's the spiritual leader of that uh, beautiful mandir on Freeman Road, off Freeman Road, St. Augustine. And it will be a fantastic celebration 
fantastic competition where each temple or school or group is given five minutes to sing, sing as a choir, all voices in unison, not one person like the pundit or the spiritual leader or the, the leader of the group singing and everybody else just singing Jai Ram, Sri Ram. We want everyone singing together a choir. We want to develop the, build the artistic musical talent and capacity of our people and also spread the knowledge of, of Sri Ram. And so the theme we selected is Ram Ayenge, Sri Ram will come. Now, Sri Ram, we may say Sri Ram is here already. We may say it's a journey. We want to reach the Sri Ram, but we have that belief. You have that love, that faith for Sri Ram. Sri Ram will come to hear your prayer. Sri Ram will come to protect you, to, to mm -hmm. assist in whatever way and support. So Ram Ayenge is the theme for Indian arrival celebrations and our Ramayan singing competition, Swadeshi competition for 2024. So look out for it. We have a number of weeks yet, about two months to go until that fantastic um, celebration. And we'll give you more information. But up front, the date is May 19th for the competition. And I know we'll, it's from 9 to 12. We'll have a wonderful lunch for all those who come. Um, of course, with the assistance of Panagyan, Deopasaji, and Sukshanti, Bhakti Mandali. And then, of course, the grand celebration for Indian Rival will take place on 30th of May, but we'll give more information on that later on. Thanks, Pandeji. Thank you, Pandit. And, you know, as you Jai, Jai, up, Let me just ask, uh -huh. sure something, please? Sure, sure. Um, I think it is understood that other branches, other people will be able to participate, not Swaha members only. Do you have any details on that? So, yeah, we, the thing is, we know, I mean, it's a competition that uh, is open to all. It's a Ramayan singing competition. So if any of our viewers on the outside wish to participate and you're not members of Swaha, there are two things that you can do. One is if you're close to a center or branch of Swaha and you wish to join with them, so your cousins, relatives, neighbors, um, friends may attend, uh, let's say, Sukshanti, up on the Jaidas temple, um, you know, Gyan Jyoti um, Mandali, and you wish to join with devotees there in, as part of the choir, because the choir could be as large as 30 people. So many temples may have just about 5, 10, 15 people maximum that sing as part of the choir or the, the regular group. So you can do it that way. Or if you want to mobilize and arrange and form your own group, um, we can have, um, just let us know. So you can text um, Panajaida Ji or you could call into the Swaha office. Six seven four um seven three eight four. Yeah. Yeah. Six seven four seven three eight four. They get the email so international at gmail dot com or um text upon it um um Jaidat Maharaj or, or or myself and we'll give you the we'll send the link to you and it will be shared on social media also for any other group um or affiliate um of Swaha. So it is open to the general public, but of course. Um, in this respect, we, we will only have a certain number of groups that could actually participate given the time frame, but we welcome others who may wish to join. So feel free if you are so interested, because it's all about participation. It's all about spreading the, the message, the word and um, of Prabhu Sri Ram. And we want to also build capacity. We want people to learn properly how to chant, how to sing Sri Ram Tritmanas. Panaji, yeah. Thank you very much, Pandit. And you know, you brought up the um issue of the name Swadeshi being coined by Pandit Gyanu. And you know, I don't think that in this program we 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 have really recognized the how accomplished Pandiji is. You know, he gives a lot of information. And Pandiji has spent, I think it's Pandiji, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's two scholarships that you would have um you'd have done in India, probably three as a for each at least. So he spent significant amount of time in India. So he is aware. Um, he's fully versed in Sanskrit and Hindi and his scriptures. And you see that a lot of the reference that he used comes from multiple scriptures that many of us as pundits we don't have access to. And Panaji, very, very accomplished. That is why, you know, he is so important to this program. And Panaji would have come up with that term, Swadeshi. So Pandit, you know, as we are approaching this occasion of Indian Arrival Day, and, you know, before we get into the other part of our discussions, you know, if you can just give us some insight into you know, what is the true meaning of the word? More than just a translation, what the word means, what it is supposed to uh, invoke and evoke in all of us as Hindus and people of Indian religion living in China and Tobago. Thank you, Pranajayat. I just want to add that when Swaha was formed, it was a collaborative effort. If when Balaram gave the name Swaha, you know, we have various pundits and individuals who contributed to make sure Swaha came forward. 
Well, so how so has born how has struggle and the history of so how will come what is this so everybody play their part and i fortunately from are able to make a contribution also now swadeshi basically means swadesh and then there's a movie called swadesh so means that like you want self so so swadesh simply means my country so in a, in, in our case my country our country is trinidad and tobago and this was used it was agreed to by all member of dharmanda all the pundits simply because we are saying we are not following india blindly ishangachar had a very beautiful saying which i never forgot the first time in india i asked him about it he said let me tell you something india is great but don't equate the people with the land so we are not going to follow what the people in india are doing because people in india do all kind of foolishness but without um you know some negative so he the secretary said let us recognize the lands with this is where sri ram was born krishna bhagwan was born this is where we have the ganga the himalayas so the place is great but we are saying we our country is trinidad and tobago and trinidad and tobago is great now i must add, i must emphasize ganga doesn't flow in trinidad a contrary to what some people think ganga flows in india and if you have river in trinidad we have mantras to use to get equivalent blessings so say it is a ganga Oh, things like that. But Swadeshi simply means what we are doing. We try to be indigenous. This is why we encourage our people to make up these songs to sing, to do the drama. And this year, I'm very pleased that Panishar, the executive, and all the panelists have agreed to do drama and singing. And we don't want to equate this with anything in India. In India, they sing drama. How you feel, they sing it, or whatever they do. So we are going to sing drama. They come. They are conventional tunes from our forefathers and ancestors who came from that. So this will be part of the thing, which is I said, you know, long time. Every time you hear about Indian rivalry, you hear Bilan, Chowki, and um, Chulhan, and Gandhi. You can't get away from that. You can't. You know, it, it's like this. When you celebrate your birthday, do you wear pampas and lie down? Do you drink a milk? So <laughs> it comes like that. We celebrate Indian rivalry. We have Chowki and Bilna, and them kind of foolish. I think we are we will be on that stage. So we are going to tell people let learn learn our scriptures. This first half we use Ramayan. Next half of the year we use in the Gita. So thank you, thank you very much, Panajay. So they share the digits of Trinidad and Tobago as Hindus. We develop one thing. I'll make one last thing here. That all the chalisa come from India. We wrote our own chalisa here. The Swaha chalisa. There's no Swaha chalisa in India. We wrote our own Swaha arti here. There's no Swaha arti in India. And one fact, India people didn't know who Swaha was. I'm surprised that people, most people, don't know who Swaha is. They do not read Devi Bhagavad. Isn't Devi Bhagavad? So just remember that. We in Trinidad here can bring forward Hinduism. Do a depend on India. India, you have great sages. For some reason, they all born there. For some born Trinidad too. Like Panjayat Panishar. Thanks, Pandit. And yes, um, you know, and we, we have to credit Panagyane for not just coming with the name Swadeshi, but in terms sure, of composing yeah. the Swaha um, Chalisa and the Swaha Arti also. Right? And I believe that Pandit, you would have brought a picture. Um, an image Swahadevi. of Swahadevi, which was never seen in um, Trinidad before that time. And well, the only temple so far in the Swaha network that has a Swaha Mata Murti is in Gyanjuti Madras, also. So, you know, it's, it, it's a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of history there, right? Um, <laughs> behind the, the, the formation of the organization and the growth mm -hmm. of the organization, also. And Pandit, you know, I, I'm glad that you brought up that issue of, you know, the Moving beyond beyond the, the Bilna and the Chulhan, all of those things, and understanding the Swadeshi meaning, you know, our own country and the indigenous part of it. Because the growth of Hinduism is also linked to the to the, to the growth of the country economically and otherwise. And I've spoken to uh, Dr. Vamiki Arjun, who has agreed to come on our program maybe next week or the following week, uh, so that we can have some discussion on that. To understand, you know, Hinduism not just as a as a compartmentalized, um, you know, part of our culture, but how it is, in, in fact, integrated into the wider society and how Hinduism, as it blossoms, contributes to the economic development of Trinidad and Tobago. And I think that is something that we all need to understand. And all of that is linked to what we spoke about last week, which was the issue of pundits and, you know, changing traditions and all of those things. So coming out of, out of that discussion, I had some questions that came to me and also some of the questions that I myself, you know, was interested in asking the panel. And the first set of questions really had to do, may seem very simplistic, but first I understand who should be pundit, um, you know, 
you know, who, who should be practicing and all of those things. I think we really need to understand what is a pundit, functions, characteristics, qualifications, and whether it be taken from a, a, a scriptural point of view or, or other experiences that my must be panel would have. You know, I'd like if you can start just sharing information. And then what do we see as a pundit? How we define a pundit? What, what are the functions? What are the characteristics that we expect? And what are the qualifications? And if we set up that framework, then we can we can make a judgment call um, based on that framework. So maybe I, I can start with Pandit Gane, we be the most senior amongst us, and then Pandit Ishwar. All right, I will take it from a scriptural point of view, from a historical point of view, and also from my point of experience. Now, there's one, one person who once said that no Pandit came from that. Now, obviously, anybody who studied history wrote that incorrect. They, they are Pandits who came here when they brought for Indian dead laborers. They brought the Pandits because the Hindu always respect their Pandits. And they brought them not to do yagya and puja and so on, but to have control over the people. That was their, their, their angle. So Pandits did come to Trinidad. So there's one, some people who study history and misinterpret history and bring up, bring, up, bring, up, bring up their own kind of thinking. So Pandits did come. And if you ask ourselves from a traditional point of view from India, even up to now, the caste system is there. And this is the most misunderstood uh, section of Hinduism. People tend to criticize the caste system. And how these things start about. Pandits is a close thing. You can't get in there. That is only certain people. You know, we cannot deny the fact. First of all, scriptural, Krishna Gwan says, Chatur Varyam Maya Shristam. If Krishna Gwan says, I, I, I created the four castes, then who are we to say there is no caste? There is caste, but what, what the problem comes is most people, whether it's politics, the religion, economics, when they have the power, they tend to abuse it. So we, we are not saying no, yes, punish abuse the power. They abuse some of the powers they have because they are supposed to be the ones who know the scriptures. And if we take from the, the nice example, Panishar is a school supervisor, you know, Panjaya very versed. If you have a number line. A good example, simple example, number line. There yeah, are one, two, three, four, five, six going on the line. So one is Brahman, two is Chatri, Vais, Sutri, and going. None is more or less than any other. On the same level of you are human being. But your values differ. No two persons are the same. So as far as caste is concerned, you're not lower or higher than anybody else. You are different. Different does mean higher or lower. So the, the, the both people give responsibility for studying scripture and living life. These are the ones given. And we, we try to again. I know we spoke last week about women pundit and women in Bhandara and so on. I will come back to this very same point. Tradition can be changed unless it is sanctioned some way or some year. So the tradition was to have Brahman who are pundits and they live the life. Now long ago, Brahman is the live of charity. Now, so I has one organization, I must say, and I'll pass on the issue after in just a, a, a few seconds. Another organization, uh, long ago, long ago, what happened? Even our father, but he was highly versed. So he did Panitai only. And he survived on that. He didn't do it for money, but he did it. Now, nowadays, if you go to Panitai only, you can survive if you want here, yeah, but you're going to have problems. So, what happened is that now all young people are supposed to be educated. So, you have most, you know, all um, Panitai so have, have degrees. You don't take that sunk, a, 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 a sunken abel and you jump and I'm going to have Baba, I'm going to have Baba, Baba no. You cannot tell we're going to be a Baba. That has gone, that has gone through. That has changed because of Swaha's um, in, in intervention. So our parents are educated in the, in, in the field of the Western way and also must be educated in terms of mantras. It is sick thing to hear somebody sing a Singhasan. And I keep on saying, this is the Singhasan. Sing means lion. Now you have Singhasan, S-I-N-G. People go sing too songs and jump up and carry on. And your pronunciation is terrible. It's worse than I know who, but it's Jamal Singh Asan. So you have to have proper pronunciation. You have to read language. You have to have this. And, you know, let me, let me, let me just say, if you want to have benefit, and this is why society is going so bad, you have somebody who playing guru, want to give you a month in the air, but he himself has no mental shakti. He himself has no power, but he want to give you power. He himself doesn't experience God. We want you to experience God. If you have to have experience of God, you want to get somebody who has experienced God. You have divinity. You have Pandits, one being a sacrifice, who do the janeu, who do pilgrimage, who do puja, who fast, do all these things. 
and develop shakti of power, then when you go, go to, when you go to a puja of somebody, it has benefit. Otherwise, it is a formality. So all these things are required for training in the Western world and in the spiritual world also, which we are so hard doing. And Padma Panishwar, who is such a good example. Thanks, Paniji. So pa Panigyandeo uh, started the ball rolling, so to speak, with with respect to this, um, the, the questions posed by Panadam Jaida. And I could tell you that um, as far as we are concerned, and um, I'm speaking, of course, my perspective and, and that of, I'm sure many of our other um, pundits, some of the, the, and the, not just Swaha pundits, but pundits in general, um, a pundit should be, um, first and foremost, um, from that um, Brahman Kul or lineage. So now the word pundit itself refers to a learned individual. So you can be a pundit. You have pundits who are, what is it, um, horse racing pundit and, and football pundit, right? So you are learned, you are versed, um, uh, and you can check the odds and 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 advise on those, um, you know, in terms of um, coaching and, and, and probably commentary, commentary and so on. So those are pundits also, but or at least the term pundit, Western um, uh, individuals have ascribed that 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 meaning to the word pundit. But pundit goes a lot deeper to that. It deals with our spirituality. It deals with your own development. It deals with um, the function, the role that you perform in the society um, among our Sanatan, Dharma, or Hindus. So first and foremost, the pundit should be a male, should be Brahman, and that itself will open up other discussions. Um, Paniji, and I want to touch on what Panigyande also mentioned um, about the, the question or individual saying that no pundits came or no Brahmanas came. None from that Brahmin caste came to Trinidad as indentured laborers. And that has been debunked so many times by many of our pundit families who have actually traced their roots not just Swaha Pandits, all of our families and pundits of various organizations and across our country and across the Indian diaspora have proven that their relatives still exist um, to this day, of course, and they are from that same Brahmin lineage. And you go back and some of the relatives of our pundits, now they may be third cousins and fourth cousins, but they are still currently there in their villages or in their cities and towns practicing. So much so for the founder of, of, of Swaha, um, his it will be one of his nephews is still there as the presiding um, almost a deity, but he the pundit Purohit there in in Pratapur in India. So it is there. People in Trinidad or Brahmanas have come from that lineage, and there's you know there can be no question about that. So while people foolishly in the past make such um, assertions, we know that there's evidence otherwise. And in fact, um, Pandaji, there there have been. In the past, pundits who were also given, um, what is it, order of the British Empire, or member of the British Empire. Right here, I live in Arima, there was a pundit, Doon Pundit, who I recall, um, and that's history. And why was he given that title? Because he performed a particular role, and there are others, but this is one I remember because it's close to, to, to where I live. And so he would have been given that particular title and that honor because he performed a particular um, function. Uh, he lived from uh, early 1900s, I believe, which would have been the time when indentorship was still um, ongoing in Trinidad and Tobago. So the reality is, um, a pundit, um, trying to come back now to that first question from that Brahman lineage and male Pandajayadaji. Okay, and I know that um, one of the verses in our, because we are trained, and you know, one of our on the train as a, a as Panigyanio, and you know you would have taught us some some verses from Bhagavad Gita, from Ramayana, etc. I want to speak over the characteristics of um Brahman's pundit. I can't remember the whole quote, but I know Shamo Damasabha Saucham Shanti Right. So if you could just expand on that and you know just explain to us what are you know what are the characteristics that are supposed to be displayed um by pundits and and, and holy men, etc. Um, as they as they perform this function of put head karam. Well, I'm glad you asked that, Panjaya. Uh, for those who want to know and check it for some information, it's chapter 18, verse 40. It says very beautifully. It explains for all of us how or who a Brahman is supposed to be and what they are supposed to have. Now it says. 
ഷമോ നമസ്തപ സൗചം ശാന്തി രാജമേ വെച്ച അതുങ്ങനെ വേഴ്സ് ഓച്ചിന് ഒക്കെ വേഴ്സ് എക്സാമ്പിൾ പണി ഈശ്വരക്ക് ചക്രം ചാജി ഫോഴ്സ് സിമ്പിൾ ബ്രാഹ്മൺ you preaching to the other people to pray to god and you you are not praying to god so the verse is in chapter 18 i'm still trying to find the camera of only 14 i'll i'll find it eventually shamo dama seva saucham shanti raj me uche gyanam vigyanam gyanam means knowledge of scripture vigyan means science and so on gyanam vigyan mastikyam these are things you have to have brahma karma so jamyam these are the um identity or the, the traits of a brahman and when you read that you will see in that very same chapter it explains how who, how our chatris has to be how our um vais all those explain chapter 18 on account of jai that you ask a question how you are supposed to be it explains very beautiful chapter 18 ഗംഗാട്ടി <laughs> There was nothing, no shed, no nothing, just hot sun and Ganga. And I tell him, if I start saying, I will find a way, you know. But I remember these words. I say, Lord, if I start saying, I find a way, you will prevent my friends in a way. Whatever hardship we have, we are going to get Hong Kong. We are going to get all these samagri to do everything. We did it. And everything passed well. well. Of course, without, <laughs> without someone negative, the Dakshina was not the mark, but <laughs> I think <laughs> that's important. The point of your duty, right? So he says, this child, your duty with... um with all the no, because of the hardship do your sacred ob- oblations as a brahman we are supposed to get up and pray every morning pray to supreme lord in the evening light dear if it is possible all your oblations yes also um excellent in the purity for giving fall of others now i believe as i practice it. i for, i i mean when they forgive falls you know you know you don't you know, think about it if somebody does you something there's karma people many people do people think, I, i will do for them and some people are saying i let's forgive but i don't forget i got all those things and we say in simple people do things they will suffer the consequences if you want to take karma in your hand then you are invoking karma to you suffer for so the lord says forgive the fault of others straightness of mind and this is what we have to understand you have to straighten your mind like hold this cause yourself on jaira if you are brahman you can be a um, how you call it and you understand they can have pandit who who um drink alcohol a pandit who don't marinate pandit a man who marinate man you know those kind of things is <laughs> straight he said control of your mind senses and behavior and believe in the vedas and believe in here that here after where do pinda dan you believe in it do they say that is some rice a ball a throwing hand and that. no you believe in it believe in it chapter 18 of krishna is saying he said believe in the scriptures you have to authority of scripture you have all these scriptures you have to this is why a pandit is different he can read and see the things that make sense let me cross reference it it doesn't make sense so we this is what a brahman has to do and he says you must accept all the truth don't the truth is not elastic truth is truth and truth is not truth i'll get some quotes on truth as about that truth always holds always and what he says these are the natural duties of a brahman 
Shri Lanka, you know, probably you now many Brahmanas who learn to knock them, but they try in Ahu. You all try in the So these are the rules of Krishna Bhagavan from chapter 8, verse 42. And the other three casts, you know, you know, you read it, you'll see it. What he says about them, what they're supposed to do. Neji. Thanks, Pandita. And I think that, I mean, one of the messages we could get out of that is, you know, when persons try to discount the caste system, the fact that Krishna Bhagavan and Panura have quoted where Krishna Bhagavan said that, you know, I created the caste and then he would have gone and explained the duties of each one. I think that it indicates that the caste system came from Krishna Bhagavan. He gave the, the information, he gave, you know, the duties of each of the caste. And I think that right through for every caste, obviously, there are going to be um, duties that are supposed to be performed. Now, each of the pundits here can attest to this, that a life of a pundit is a life of sacrifices. They're very difficult. And if you if you run a temple as pundit, Gyan, they would have done. I, I He would have built one. He's running a, a second one now. Um, pundit Ishar also, he runs a temple. I, I would have um, been there since the, 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 the building of a temple. And it's very difficult at times, you know, as a pundit, you sacrifice more than others. Sometimes you're there from the start, you remain till the end, um, your own family. So, for example, my wife, she would help clean up, sometimes clean the toilet and all of those things. When Do things that others are unwilling to do. So many times persons see a, a, a pundit's life as a life of glory and a life of, you know, being worshipped and all of that. But if you have to do your duty as pundit, again, you're saying you have to suffer intense harsh, hardship. You have to be a servant of dharma in order to ensure that, you know, sanata dharma and Hinduism continues to be propagated. And that is the type of sacrifice that needs to be done. Panditji also alluded to the uh, Gyanam, Vigyanam, I believe that it is it. That is it. Gyanam Vigyanam, yes. yes. Right. So knowledge of scriptures, knowledge of um, of, of, of the world in which you live, the, the, the secular world, the natural world around us. And uh, Panagyanam, I believe you have completed studies in um, is it literature, English? I would have done social sciences, but you should have done natural sciences, as well as we have done our spiritual studies. And if you look at all of the pundits in the organization, every single pundit is qualified from the, the, the side of our dharma, our, our, our spiritual practices, our religious practices, knowledge, as well as we are all professionals in a field. And we are not just, you know, one dimensional. And that is very important because if you want to lead persons and you know you want to take them on both sides, because we always say that life is a balance between the spiritual and the secular, then we as leaders ourselves, we need to be qualified. So Panditji, thank you so much for sharing your that verse and you know explaining it so eloquently, because it really sheds light on you know what a pundit is, the functions and the duties and the characteristics of a pundit. And so you know, we at this point we are not making any definite conclusions on who should be a pundit. But if someone does call themselves a pundit, then these are the characteristics that they should be displaying. Uh, pundit, are you sure is there anything you'd like to contribute to this yes. discussion? I, I want to commend um, Pundit Gyandeoji, right, who is a senior to us and really has the knowledge. So, I mean, many of our viewers, I'm sure, may be familiar perhaps with this verse and, and I myself as Pandaji um, mentioned it. We all remember it, but to recall the exact um, verse um, 42, chapter 18, if you want to read it for yourself, right? And the thing is, uh, many of us may have other pundits looking on also, may also be happy that Pandit Gyandeo has raised this because I'm saying the, the last part, Swabhavajam, um, referring to, you know, the qualities of, of the Brahman, the holy man, of the pundit born of um, a particular nature then so you know they, they always have whether it is by birth or um you know others say by karma then um by actions but the thing is it is expressly explicitly written here and then some of the other um you know characteristics that should be there self-control dhamma um as panaji mentioned saucham purity extremely important vigyan that that knowledge jnanam wisdom um, these are characteristics, as we have been saying, but more than that, you know, that attitude, that whole, um, the bhava, as we say, or the swabhava, that one um, can witness or one experiences when you're in the company of your guru, you will know. And many of our pundits, they have something, and I'm not talking about swaha pundits only, but our pundits in general, those who have come from that lineage, those who live the life, and those who help others and serve others, 
you can experience something special when you're in their company and they can be, um, you can of course benefit from them and they support you and they will benefit too in that you're supporting the mandir and supporting the organization but the reality is that attitude that characteristic of a true holy man a true pundit and incidentally throughout ram tritmanas throughout the bhagavatam we get you know little um, wonderful episodes beautiful itihas and um, you know little kathas here and there that describe the nature of the holy man from the wonderful this is this reminds me of the you know the analogy that's given of the cotton um the cotton wool itself and then the chandan were the nature of the true holy man the true pundit and many of these are, are, are come out here self control peace tolerance knowledge and then there are certain things and i'm not knocking anyone but it's something i've observed and i've seen it with kirtan groups i've seen it with some of our pundits and i shouldn't say our pundits not swaha pundits but it could be any pundit and sometimes if you have a, a medical condition you may need to drink some water drinking water to prevent yourself from fainting away or feeling you, you know serious um, experiencing negative effects of serious thirst that is one thing but we cannot treat our scriptures and our puja you know with any disrespect and i have observed i will not call um the stations or the program um hopefully no, it will never happen on ietv i have seen people who purport to be pundits or put forward themselves as pundits and you are drinking i could only assume it is tea or coffee you have right there on the singhasan and as pundit um, gandhi rightfully said is that a singhasan now where you have all this paraphernalia there when the scripture is open in front of you your book your ram tritmanas bhagavatam is open in front of you and you take a little water break or, or a coffee break in between the katha this is not after the katha has ended you go and you have um, your little bit of coffee or tea uh, have something tea that's fine that's all well and good the parmachar I, I know um, regularly i um, would mention it no water break in the puja in the katha no water break you go straight through it as part of the sacrifice except i'm saying if you have a medical condition there's allowance for that and it is something it has to do with the upbringing of the pundit and this may be controversial because some may disagree and may say well if you have a um this is what you were taught what is wrong with that just as it is a, every day um you, you know that you will we could be sitting here and talking and people have their cup of coffee like you had the program coffee with karan right popular you're drinking your coffee and you're talking but not in puja not in devotion not in satsang and i'm making a point to bring across strongly who is a pundit and the type of pundit we should respect one who lives up to certain ideals and doesn't fall short of what is expected and you will find none of these swaha pundits taking a water break while reading their ramayan unless um doctor prescribes it pandiji yeah yeah no definitely yeah. and um you know in the world today you have things like sip and paint now we have sip and pray right and you have this situation where persons would walk around during the ramayan and and, and share bottles of water So those those things are discouraged. I I know from amongst the Swaha pundits is discouraged, but I have seen those things. I know them now. Mine, I'm thinking, how how is this how is this allowed? Because this certainly goes against the you know the 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 archeran that we are supposed to practice. I know. Panchayat, Panchayat, if I may just make a contribution. Yes, Panchayat. Yeah. Those who do science could find out how long can a human being go without drinking water? Not weeks. If not months. Yes. I, so I, you want to tell me? Yeah. Within three or four hours, you can not drink water. You must drink water. You will die if you drink water. It just shows the lack of discipline. Upon that, our Muslim brothers and sisters, and I'm sure we have many of them. Many of our Muslim brothers and sisters watch the program because they love IE TV and and they, they love us. What happened is too. They're going right through. Not so from morning till evening without morning, a sip of water. Morning, yeah. yeah. But our Hindus believe you must have water. Uh, I call it a style. So you walk in a bottle of water. The chorus and the baba. And the group. Jai Ram Jai. Good morning, before you go forward, because Pani Ishwar mentioned it. I just found the Gita. Where Krishna Bhagwan said, "Chatur Varya Maya Shristam Gun Karm Bigharsha Gun Karm." So the caste is based on Gun. Gun is what you are born with, and Karm what you do. So when you born a Brahman, you will, you may not be a Brahman through Karm. You are by birth you are a Brahman. You born you born a Brahman, but by Karm and action you are a Brahman. So Krishna Bhagwan, chapter mm -hmm. four. Verse 
straight in, it says clearly, chapter 4, verse 13, Gun karm vibhagasha. Gun and karm is what determines whether you are Brahman or not. Sorry, Baba. No, that's fine. I mean, this all adds to the, to the, um, to the discussion. And even in sociology, you know, have the, the concept of, of, of open and closed system, open social system, closed system. And, you know, in, in sociology, you, you, it will teach you that, you know, in terms of class, you, you, you can move up a class within this, this life, etc. But if you are born in a closed system, then, then there's, no up, there's no mobility. However, whichever direction we are looking at. And, and, and the caste system is considered, you know, a closed system where you're born into a caste and you remain in, in that caste for the rest of your life. And as Pandaji is saying, it is all linked to the, to the concept of karma. So, you know, when persons discount that, then I wonder, how can we be Hindus? And we believe in the concept of karma reincarnation, but that is the foundation of the caste system, but yet we discount the caste system. It, it is, you know, counterintuitive. It doesn't make any sense. So, you know, we hope that our viewers can really take all of these things in consideration. And when others present alternative views to you, that they're able to understand, you know, what are the realities and to take all of these factors into consideration because this is the idea of the program to present all of these things to you. Um, there, there were one or two, uh, as we were speaking, one or two, um, you know, tan tangential points. I think um, one of them would have been the idea of... Um, Panaji, earlier on you mentioned, you know, we use the term pundits and, and guru. And, you know, we notice more and more there's this, this um, the use of things like uh, a, a sport pundit or a sport guru. All right. If you want to use anything, the term for anything that is circular, we will say we'll call it a chakra. Anything that is a wheel is called a chakra. But, and this is just my view. Um, It is something I brought up with the IRL at one time. We were supposed to have a release on it. It just never happened. Um, you know what we call it, despiritualization of a term. So, for example, a pundit, in my view, a guru is not just an is, a, is not just a learned person, but it's a learned person in 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 spirituality in Hinduism. That that is a distinction between an a guru and an expert. And sometimes we can't just take word and translate them, and, and they carry the same meaning or connotation. So the connotation is different. But we see that now, you know, a lot of gurus have been used. You have a, a sports guru and different type of gurus and pundits. You have chakras. And, you know, to a certain extent, we can say it's cultural appropriation. We can call it that, right? We can cry that. But to me, the, the, the biggest disservice that is being done is that we are despiritualizing these words and they are being used in all sorts of different ways. So you'll have a soon a, a, a meet expert guru. I mean, how, how do you reconcile that? And is it something that we as Hindus or as an organization, we need to say, listen, the word guru, pundit, it has a special meaning applicable to, to our way of life and therefore should not be used in, 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 in certain contexts because it's inappropriate. So it's just, it's just food for thought and I don't know if any of the pundits would like to you know, share your views on it. I, I will say when we talk about guru and pandaji, I this is why I was alluding to the fact that People, um, yes, yeah, sport pundit, football pundit, recent pundits, um, guru. Um, so many um, people now are given the title guru. And it has, in a way, despiritualized that that term um, and um, cultural appropriation, whatever other, um, um, you know, way you want to describe it. It has been going that direction. But the guru that we speak of, of course, is that one who has given you guru diksha. So the diksha guru. You can have vidya guru. You can have a hundred vidya gurus. Those who have taught you from, from ABC all the way up to PhD, all of them, and, and even after two, are your gurus, their teachers, you would have learned something from them. But they cannot be given that while you may love them and you appreciate what they have done for you, that one who helps you along the path of God realization, your Diksha guru, that one who has um, initiated you is that um, guru. And of course, you know, um, Pratam Guru Mata. So the mother is the first guru. Then second, we may say the father. Then the third will be that one who initiated you. But when we speak about guru and we talk about pundit here, let us um, in no way um, diminish the exalted nature of one's guru um, by you, you know comparing them to all these other pseudo gurus, so to speak, Pandaji. You see, this takes into consideration the dynamics of language. 
Now, Hindi and Sanskrit are very precise languages. So my father, father is not just grandfather. You have a word for that. Father, father is Aja. Aja. My mother, father is Nana. So we have specific words for everything. And so in Hindi, what has happened over the years, with interference of other people, Guru, which refers to spiritual teacher, has become a tabla guru, a singing guru. You know, so they have brought, brought down it too. They have removed the sacred line of demarcation, saying that a guru is only restricted to spirituality. So if you play tabla guru, you're not tabla guru. You might be a ustad. That's a different thing. So this is how it comes down. So that you're singing good? Yeah, yeah, good singer. Right? So we have to, and then what happened, the words are taken into English also. Now, some people feel proud that English uses the word mantra. That is mantra. That is mantra. He mantra is a curse word. You know, so they use that, and you do over and over like that. So they take pundit, same way pundit, a learned person in whatever field. So they have taken that English language, have incorporated our sacred terms, and we don't, I'm not sure we have control over English language or not. Because people use it, language is dynamic, we say. But we have to use it accordingly. So if you want to have a guru, a guru is spiritual. You have a tabla teacher, he a tabla teacher, he a dhyapak. You go to school, the teacher teaching math and English, French and Spanish, he a dhyapak or dhyapika. They are teacher, they are not a guru. But now they have kind of make it all together, guru, teacher. And we have to fight against that. Sometimes scriptures, which had an example of like 24 guru, the 24 teachers. Which for any of us? Everything is a guru for you. I mean, do you see that confuse people? If you say a teacher, guru is some spiritual, and you have to maintain that. Guru and guru diksha is different. So, Pranjaya, this is my um, take on it that language is dynamic, and some people just break down the barriers and break down the sanctity of language. You know, I remember long ago when I dress up, I got suddenly very nice um, shoes and shirt and things, shirt and things, and oil leaking on your hair and things. I walk out, right? And you ask, how looking, man? They say, man, looking good. Now, when you ask, how you say, it's a Jackson tie. I go, how you look at man, you can buy. So what they have changed language. Language has been changing over the years to, to, to worse. And that in keeping with Kalyug. Setyuk said that about Kalyug. Everything has to deterioration. This is what it's all about. So society is deteriorating. And this is why, this is why at the appropriate time, the Supreme Lord will come as Kalki Bhagwan. Thanks, Panit. So I think we all agree on the same thing, right? That that you know, we 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 as an organization should take a stand on this. And ensure that you know no one appropriates the word in a way that we do not um you know that is not consistent with with the, with the true meaning of words such as guru and pandas etc. And we we are approaching the, the closing of our program for today, so I just want to bring up one more issue, and we can close on this. And you know there are so much things again that are coming out of um this week's program. We'll discuss in, in a in a different week. Um, but Panditji, you know you mentioned the the. The idea that you know we as Hindus sometimes you hear somebody say in the Western world say mantra and then we feel good. So then you know we 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 feel that okay, there's something great to that, not because it's an innately great in its own right, but because someone has had some creed and said. And it speaks a sense of you know um inferiority that, that Hindus Hindus have that 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 we see. So, so for example, yoga, we know yoga. Yoga inherently is good. But yoga becomes great because Will Smith does it, or Marshall Montano does it, or some some great entertainer does it. And when one day, you know, they, they wear a sari or, or they sit in a, in, 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 a, in a posture, then we believe that there's greatness here. That makes it great because somebody of standing does it. And we do not see the greatness of, of these things that, that are innate that in itself, it is great. And, you know, to me, as I said, you know, it speaks uh, to a sense of inferiority in what we have. We, we, we don't see the greatness of it. And, and we, need, we need external validation. So I just want to ask both on this, I just share your views on that, and then we, we conclude for today. You see, what happens is that we have an inherent sense of inferiority complex. So yoga ain't good unless somebody else do it. We don't want Dehi, but you go drink yoga. Everything else, someone else does it, then we, yeah, 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 yeah. It means inherent, and that comes stem from the fact that historically, India is ruled by foreigners for over 1,100 years. Even now, when you go to India, you experience, experience that a good few times. 
you think foreigners are superior. Any foreign is superior. So you go in there and you talk Hindi. I come again be, being boofed for the proper term in the bus. When I talk in Hindi, so I say, what, you don't know English? In, the, in a bus in Delhi, they you ask you, I don't know English. So that they, English for them is, is intelligence here. Is that, that the white man thing, the English man thing? So what happened inherently, historically, and then otherwise also, which is come from a religious point of view, I'm going to that. But from a religion point of view, they feel all religions inferior. They feel we are backward. They feel we are, uh, but now it's come, come back to the reality. So what we have to do is to be proud. We have to inculcate ways, find ways. We have saw her, we have punished. So find ways, and punish like you, Pranjaidat, who is studying, who is doing great work in the educational field, Pranjaidat, and Ishwar, who is in the um, supervisor tree. We have to ensure that our young Hindus get that pride in them. This is why one of the things we did, we, we always do. We always say, Garu se kaho, hum Hindu hai. Say pride. We are Hindus. We have pride in what we have. And let other people want to come. We must go to them. They don't come to us. We have, we have, we have the oldest religion in the world, the oldest civilization in the world. And so many great things. I can't go that now because of how long in. So basically, we have developed that in our younger generation. Pride in what we have and who we are. Panaji. Thank you very much, Pandit. Very inspirational, Pandit Ishwar. Thanks, um, thanks, Panjadat. And I agree with Pandit um, Gyandeo. And this is the whole reason for the Ramayan Singh competition. So I want to end with what I said in the beginning. For us to have um, that belief, understand how valuable what we have, what our ancestors have left for us, that, that love for Sri Ram Trit Manas and Ramayan singing. So people singing all sorts of different songs and bhajans. And yes, you can sing bhajan, you can sing kirtan. All of that is wonderful. But many people growing up do not um, have have not been reading Ramayana anymore. You're not learning even school children. You know they practice and they train for Ramayana quiz. But the actual singing of the Ramayana verses as you grow older, many of our people mm -hmm. you will go to to temple and you know you will join in singing Jai Ram Sri Ram along with um the, the Guruji or or, or the Vyas Pandaji. But the point is, we want you to value what you have. Your Sri Ram Manas, your Bhagavad Gita. Get in the habit of reading it, understanding it, singing it. So we are trying to bring back that inherent, you know, love and respect for our own culture, for our religion, for Sanatan Dharma, for Niji. So thank you. And I know, I mean, both both persons here would have been principals of the um, of the Swai Hindu College and would have done tremendous work in trying to build that sense of pride in our own and making us making the students and the younger Hindus proud of their their dharma and their practices and so of course you know that is one of our objective and we'll continue to do so you know so you know when we take our place in higher offices as many of us have done then you do so with a sense of pride and you do not give up your identity when you meet your, your fellow Hindu brother and sister you can say sitaram lord and proud as many of us do in our organizations and that that is the type of you know pride we want to instill we want our Hindus to understand that our dharma, they have value not because, you know, a, a movie star believes in it, but because it, in, it is inherently valuable and we'll continue upon that path. So let me say a special thanks to both pundits um, once again for sharing those, those, those insights and um, continue looking out for our programs. You have the number here. Any questions you have, continue sending the comments and um, you know, whatever questions you send, whatever comments, topics that you're interested in, then we will obviously discuss those um, at our future programs. So until next program, um, we say Sitaram to each and every one of you and do have a safe week. Sitaram, everyone. Sitaram.